And now it's time for church chat. Friends, I'm pleased to share with you this second of two videos, an interview with Shane Watson on his discernment process as he feels the call of the Holy Spirit, drawing him closer to diaconal ministry. I do invite you to watch the first installment of these interviews with Deb Chapman. That's the previous video in our YouTube feed. Now on to my conversation with Shane. Welcome, Shane. It's good to see you. Hey, Father Jesse, good to see you too. And uh, I'm so delighted that you could make some time today to uh, discuss your call and your discernment in the process of moving toward uh, diaconal ordination. I think we should begin uh, at the beginning what exactly uh, is the ministry and the work of a deacon, and how are you called to that ministry and work? It's a good, it's a good question. It's an important question. Um, from my perspective, the, the deacon is somebody who stands on the, th the threshold of, um, of the church and, and the community around us. So it's somebody who... Um, is both in, in inviting people in in a certain way and 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 sending people out and and walking alongside um, people in our in our community um, and there's a liturgical role that a deacon has that really symbolizes that that um, that uh, that place of sort of standing on boundaries and standing on the threshold of the church and the community um, and in in my call to ministry um, I've got some things that I'm involved with already that I expect will inform uh, diaconal ministry. So, for example, um, some work with Greenwood Coalition, um, which really represents work with people who are on the margins of our community. Um, and also work um, on some issues related to housing. Um, so in particular, I'm involved with Habitat for Humanity through Think Tiny Homes Northumberland. But, um, you know, housing is one of those things that's really fundamental. It's, um, it's really difficult to uh, live and be, and, and be truly whole and healthy if you don't have a safe place to, to live. So those are a couple of things that um, in, in my calling I've become involved with already. Um, the, the, the diaconal aspect, um, I think, will help in, inform that, and those things are likely to evolve, but that's, that's where I'm at right now, and I look forward to the opportunity to engage with the St. John's community more and, and with yourself and with the bishop about how those things might evolve um, in, in the form of diaconal ministry. So the ministry of a deacon is fundamentally one that is about service. Uh, it is servant ministry. And uh, typically we would hear that the deacon represents the world to the church and the church to the world. And so you've certainly got a number of areas in your life that would, would dovetail, would, would fit with that. Uh, I, I wonder about... Um, the, the process of discernment to this point. Um, and there, there are a couple of things that I, I, wanna, I wanna follow on there with you. Um, first of all, I would say, uh, how is this an outgrowth of the common identity, the common ministry that we all share uh, in, our, in our baptism? Um, why the ministry of a deacon? Uh, what's, what's winsome about that for you? What's attractive about that for you? Well, it's a, that's an interesting question because um, I've, I, I've been involved with um, ministries at St. John's and in the community um, for some time. Um, I've, been a, I've been a lay reader for well over 10 years, for example, and, and so, and I've been involved with uh, organizations in the community for a long time also. And if you asked me in the summertime about uh, a call to the diaconate, I would have said, I'm not sure that's something I'm, I'm called to. Um, I, I think that 
my ministry as a lay person is is where I'm to be. And I've always tried to promote, um, you know, the role of the laity in the church and try to represent that as best I could. But um, our Lord uh, sometimes works on your heart. And, um, and um, I got to a point where I, I think personally I, I realized in, in, in prayer and in discernment with others that um, that the diaconal um, ministry um, is is something that would enliven and, and enrich that work that I'm doing as a lay person in a in a different way, um, which is not to say it's it was necessarily better, but um, that that was something I was being called to, whether I liked it or not um and um i had some work to do to sort of get out of my own way um and realize that you know what uh i should pull the boat up to the shore and um intentionally <laughs> invite jesus into the boat so to speak and uh realize that um it's really not my hand at the helm and um so the call to the diaconate is, is, feels to me uh, like I'm relinquishing something of myself and, um, and turning that over to, uh, to Jesus and, um, and being more open to how uh, Jesus is at work in my life and in, in our life as a community together. And the diaconate is symbolic and representative of, of that. And, um, so not entirely my decision all by myself. That's usually a good sign that you're doing the right thing. <laughs> In the Christian journey, I've found, uh, you know, Jesus take the wheel perhaps is the more modern presentation of that. But yes, yeah, letting the Lord get into your boat, uh, I think is a good sign. I, I want to talk about um, discernment. Now, discernment is the watchword for the process in which uh, you are engaged, in which the parish is engaged, uh, and in which various other parties in the wider diocese are engaged uh, in terms of your call to diaconal ministry. But discernment is not really a word that we hear very often outside of the church. <laughs> it's something that we we use quite a lot in the church, but you don't often hear it in, in other conversations. Tell me a bit about the discernment process uh, for you uh, to this point. And specifically what I, I wanna dig in on here is, is how other people uh, in the parish or in the wider church have been part of your discernment journey to this point. Yeah, I think first of all, discernment is something that, that happens in community and um... And so I, I view, uh, in particular, the community at St. John's, a really important, really important part of the discernment process. And um, uh, I really appreciate it when when uh, people uh, approach me and uh, and either have questions or they have something that's been on their heart um, that they want to they want to express. And sometimes that's been in the form of uh, you know, I, I, uh, I think that you might be called to something, Shane, or, hey, would you like to get involved with this ministry? Um, sometimes it's, 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 it's questions that people might have. And um, so I really welcome the opportunity for people to, uh, to ask questions. Um, uh, if they've got things that they've been praying about, um, that, uh, about ministry, at St. John's, um, perhaps things that need to be encouraged or um, things that are coming to them. I'd really be interested in, in, in speaking with people and I'm, I'm quite open to uh, exploring whatever it is that, that, that people have on, their, have on their minds or in their prayers, because that's an important part of the discernment process to help us, um, uh, help us understand how the Lord is calling each of us um, and together as a community um, uh, to ministry here in Port Hope. 
And that process is ongoing. Uh, the diocesan process talks a lot about raising up uh, a deacon for uh, ministry in the church. Um, but what we need to emphasize, I think, is that the, the process of, of discerning the, the role uh, and the ministry that the deacon will have um, and how the deacon will call us all to our, our own baptismal ministry is something that goes on uh, precisely because we have a deacon in our midst. I, I wonder if you feel the same way. Yeah, I think it's um, raising up feels a little uncomfortable to me because I don't think the the the, the diaconate is about um, simply elevating somebody. Um, it, it's, I, I would use the word, it's more like raising out um, because it's an opportunity to, uh, um, to activate um, ministries in our community within St. John's and, and around us. So uh, a deacon is somebody who is, is, is representing something um, um, in the church and in the world around us, um, but really is, is somebody who is being pushed out of the community um, more than they're being pushed up in the community, the way I look at it. You talked a little bit about some of the other volunteer work that uh, you're doing in the community. Um, I wonder if we could get uh, just a little more personal. You are uh, a family man, um, and you're also somebody who has a, a career that's important to you. How do you view those things in light of your uh, discernment? Those, those things are all connected. Um, and, you know, this particular time, um, the calling to the diaconate that I'm sensing right now is there's, there's sort of a practical aspect to the, to the timing. I think, um, I am, uh, I'm a family man. So Karen and, and Sydney and, and Spencer, uh, and, uh, of course our dog Ernie, but, uh, Spencer's off at university now. Um, Sydney's, um, in grade 11, it's not going to be too long before she's off at school. The kids are a lot more independent than, um, than they were when they were quite young. And, um, and so there's opportunity that, that comes along with that as some of those responsibilities as a father change. Um, in my work life, I'm a, I'm a professional engineer and a, and a project management professional. I, uh, work at Cameco here in the community and, um, that role that I have at work, I see as something that's connected to diaconal ministry as well, because um, diaconal ministry is very difficult to carry out all by yourself. It requires relationships and connections to people and, um, and abilities to discern what the needs are in the world around the church. And, and my work life is an opportunity um, to sort of help see that, um, to establish connections. Some of my work at Cameco is specifically out in the community and um, and uh, working with other organizations outside of Cameco. And um, so that's an important connection, I think, also. Um, and I've been making some changes at, at work over the last couple of years to scale back my hours a bit to help create some time um, in my week for some of the other volunteer ministries that I'm, I'm involved with. So that's all that's all connected um to the things that that people might um more naturally think are related to diaconal ministry uh like volunteering with organizations like habitat for example or greenwood um, or work in the church i think um involvement uh in my secular careers is an important aspect of what's informed my ministry so far and and i think will continue to be a, a part of it for a while i'm sure you want to carry on this conversation you said earlier that discernment is something that happens in community um i, I wonder if uh you want to talk a little bit about some of the things you'd like to to take up with uh your fellow parishioners at saint john's um how they can reach out to you yeah, well, as I was saying, I'm really, really keen to speak with people who um, have, have questions, 
um, have ideas about ministry. Um, maybe they see things uh, uh, in the church or in the community around us that need some encouragement or, or might be opportunities. Um, or maybe they need, they, they think they need help with something. Um, all those things that I have the potential to intersect with the ministry of a deacon, um, I'd be quite interested to uh, talk about whether you bump into me at, at church or you want to give me a call on the phone or send me an email or have a coffee. I'm, uh, I'm really interested to kind of hear what, hear what people have to say, hear what's on their mind. Um, after the announcement was made uh, about the nominations, um, some people approached me with some things that I found encouraging. Um, you know, uh, a couple of people approached me and said they, they recognize this is a process that's going to be ongoing. Um, and, uh, and so hearing that from people has been really helpful. Uh, some people expressed um, uh, a hope that, uh, that the process will be both uh, rewarding and, and challenging. Um, and I, I think challenging is an important thing to, to consider because um, the, the ministry of a deacon sort of being on the threshold or on the borders is something that can be challenging and um, something that can be challenging to our church community as well. And so um, communicating and sharing with one another about how we're feeling or uh, what we think we might be called to are all things I'd really love to speak with people about. I, I think you've put it beautifully, Shane, um, that you will surely be challenged uh, personally as you continue on this discernment journey, uh, but that part of the office and work uh, of a deacon is to present a holy challenge to the people of God to live into the fullness, the fullness of the call that they've received in their baptismal ministry. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye? Well, I'd really just like to express my gratitude to uh, the discernment committee at St. John's, who I think have really done a great job of, of uh, helping to set out the, uh, the process for us at St. John's, have helped to inform me and, and hopefully others in the community about the role of the deacon and, and the possibilities that that has here at St. John's. So. I really appreciate their work um, and the work of everybody who's who's connected or followed the discernment process. I think it's um, I think it's a, an example of how the Holy Spirit is at work at St. John's, and um, for that, I'm very thankful. Well, Shane, I, I think I should end with a word of gratitude to you for engaging so faithfully and offering your best gifts for the ministry of the church, as you've done for many years but also as you began by saying, letting the Lord have control of your life uh, and your sense of call and being a sign and a symbol to us already of the common call that we share in baptism to live into the fullness of who God is calling us to be for Jesus Christ and the building up of his kingdom. So Shane, God bless you. And I assure you of the prayers, uh, uh, not only of the clergy of St. John's, but of course, of all of your fellow parishioners as you continue in this holy time. So God bless you and thank you. Thank you.